In a new study, earth scientists have found that a major earthquake 2,500 years ago, which was one of the world's largest and the most impactful, actually went on to change the course of the Ganges River abruptly, the river also being one of the largest on earth. This is one of the major incidences of avulsion or river changing courses that has been documented in history. With satellite imagery, the authors from US and China and other places have found what appears to be the remnant of the former main channel of the river about 100 kilometers south of Dhaka in Bangladesh, running parallel to the current channel, the current main channel of the Ganges River. This region, the former channel, frequently floods today and today is being used for paddy fields. The discovery that the Ganges changed course was made after geologists noticed different colored sand stripes when they came across an area that was freshly excavated for a pond and had not yet been filled with water. This was all the way back in 2018. They discovered that there used to be sand volcanoes here where the pond excavation had taken place. And these sand volcanoes are those that formed by pressure of buried layers of material. And these erupt at the surface with mud and water. And this typically happens during earthquakes. Today, just like always, the Ganga begins flowing in the Himalayas at the Gangotri Glacier at an elevation of 3,892 meters. It flows downstream for over 2,500 kilometers before merging in with other major rivers like Brahmaputra and Meghna and then flowing into the Bay of Bengal. This delta which empties into the Bay of Bengal is the world's second largest river drainage system. This flow of these humongous quantities of melting ice water into the ocean from the coast of Bangladesh and West Bengal directly influences water temperatures and sea surface temperatures in the Bay of Bengal and impact climate and weather events here. Just like every other river and water body, the flow of water influences the geomorphology or structural changes of Earth here. The river then undergoes changes, both minor and major, throughout its path. One noticeable way that this happens is when rivers flow downstream. They bring lots and lots of sediments with them and deposit them as they drain into the ocean. And over time, this deposition of sediment raises the ground level at the discharge, making it grow higher than the floodplain that surrounds it. Then the river breaks through this and forges a new path with all of its sheer power and might. This happens over time with or without help from events like an earthquake. This changing of path is called an avulsion. Earthquake related avulsions occur very rapidly in the blink of a geological eye instantaneously. When this team was in India and Bangladesh in 2018 while studying the course of the Ganges River and past earthquakes, they came across this construction site for a pond where the earth was freshly dug up. On one side, on a flank of this pit, they saw vertical stripes of light colored sand that flowed through the horizontal layers of mud. This is a known feature that occurs during earthquakes. When watery areas shake constantly, they pressurize layers that are buried and push them upwards like volcanoes and these erupt at the surface in the form of sand volcanoes. These are called seismites. Here, this discolored sand from the bottom layers of the ground were about 30 to 40 centimeter wide, but the deposition cut through 3 to 4 meters of mud in depth meaning that that's how deep the sand was ejected from. When the team analyzed these sand volcanoes, they found that these structures were all oriented in a very specific pattern, which suggested that they were all created simultaneously by a single event. Chemical analysis, especially luminescence dating of these sandy grains here in these mud pipes, show that these crystals and grains date back to 2,500 years ago. At the same time, about 85 kilometers away downstream of the Ganga, there is a similar site which in the past had been filled with mud and it aligns with being the old channel of the river. 
the only way these two structures can exist simultaneously and the sand particles here dated to the same time period is through a gigantic earthquake of magnitude 7 or 8. This earthquake was so huge that it would have changed the flow of this gigantic river system. Where did such a powerful earthquake come from in this region? The team discovered that there are two potential sources for this powerful earthquake that happened 2500 years ago. One is a subduction zone or the part of tectonics where a plate sinks under another which is happening in the southeast of Bangladesh. The huge plate is pushing itself under the northeastern Indian subcontinent. The other source, probably more likely, is the foothills of the Himalayas. This region is a constant source of earthquakes as we Indians are very familiar because the Indian subcontinent is pushing into the Asian plate forming these Himalayan mountains. This place still sees regular earthquakes even today. This ancient quake that occurred here nearly 2,500 years ago probably originated nearly 200 kilometers away from the flow of the Ganges. But the nature of the soil and rock here led to liquefaction or the shaking of solid ground such that it behaves like a liquid. This liquefaction led to the propagation of earthquake on shallow land, causing the rerouting of surface water over a different gradient. This is not an earth-shattering theory. This has happened to many rivers across the world. Even today, many rivers all over the world are constantly being shaped and changed by earthquakes. When it comes to Ganga itself, there was one as recently as 1762 that caused changes and another one early in 900 CE. Even another one in 1140 CE caused changes to the elevation of the Ganga River. In fact, these Himalayan foothills are becoming so geologically stressed now because of the plates pushing up against the Asian plate that we are expecting a huge, powerful, destructive earthquake at any time. We have spoken about this before in other videos and this is in fact known and well established. The 1762 earthquake produced a tsunami that moved up the Ganges River to Dhaka. The authors note that even in the 1950 earthquake in Assam that happened during monsoons, the elevation and the width of the Brahmaputra, the mighty Brahmaputra, was changed. So rivers change courses because of earthquakes all the time. Now, okay, so a major earthquake changed the course of the Ganges system in the past. So what? The implications become clear when we understand that this region is home to 140 million people. Any future earthquake in this region could lead to also avulsions, but major flooding and destruction of various kinds. It's not just the Ganges. Other rivers, especially the ones that have been the cradles of civilization, have similar risks. Myanmar's Iravadi River, China's Yellow River, and the Jordan River, around which there is still violent and systematic conflict. There are many other rivers that are at risk of avulsion due to earthquake. As humans begin to modify the natural environment at large scales, including taking on projects like river interlinking, the impacts on people are better understood when learning about how these rivers fared in the past when their course was changed. It is also a very promising field of study for the near future, considering how mighty the Ganga is, how fast our icebergs and our glaciers are melting, and just how much water will be transported through the river system soon enough. Both rivers and quakes in this region have had and will continue to have very large-scale, very long-lasting social, economic and political effects and impacts. And therefore, it is important for us to study what kind of impact was created in the past so that we can understand the future of our own existence in this area.